Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sri Banerjee and thank you for having me in this conference this year. Um, today I will be talking about uh, using random forests for improved health outcomes and social change. Before I get started, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in public health for the last 20 years and um, have been working on techniques um, over the years in order to um, handle nationally representative data sets. And so um, currently I'm a core faculty member at the Walden uh, University uh, School of Health Sciences and I teach doctoral level students and am engaged actively in uh, statistical research. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, today, in roughly the next 10 minutes, I will be talking about um, the different types of uh, machine learning categories and where random forest fits in. So um, this is a very short amount of time to talk about all of these um, aspects, but what I will do is I will show you some of the theoretical underpinnings of uh, random forest, which is a type of supervised machine learning and demonstrate how uh, in real time how a nationally representative data set can be used to study um, and understand some of the social problems better. Here's the abstract just in case you don't get a chance to look at it. So the analysis of um, survey data is not something that's new or unique to machine learning. The nationally representative data sets that, is, that the Centers for Disease Control holds, a lot of these are being actively continuously collected um, and surveillance measures are being actively conducted. So with all of this massive data coming in, what are some techniques that we can use to be able to handle all of these uh, data sets. So there's specific types of considerations that are needed in survey data sets. So these are some of them. So one of the ones that I will be focusing on in this talk is more the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. So the specific problem that um, I wanted to address here is trying to understand depression. So why did I select depression, um, mental health, is one of those areas um, that is a common factor for uh, certain social problems. So in terms of depression causing not only uh, mental health issues, but also um, certain social health and physical health ramifications which come about with that. So understanding um, this subpopulation will help us uh, destigmatize and really be able to provide the help that is needed for individuals and um, that are going through depression. Um, so this is one example. Depression is one example of an area that can really um, benefit from the tools that are available um, to us through random forest and other machine learning techniques, um, especially I'll show you specific uh, measures that are needed. So just um, a little bit about this. Um, if you see here, um, you can, it's completely different from the traditional parametric statistics. Um, we harness in machine learning the computational um, power of the faster computers that are um, over the years developing. And so the widespread availability of uh, faster computers has made machine learning possible and feasible um, at the individual level. So this is showing how, uh, th these are just different examples of how uh, the learning supervised learning setup uh, makes sense. And if you want to, you can go over this a little bit more, um, but there's roughly usually a training data set and then a test data set. So um, typically you split the data set um, into uh, first training and then in a separate proportion you test um, 
your model. So a lot of these use CART techniques. Um, the main uh, technique that is used in terms of deriving random force um, is a specific type of regression. Um, and this is being largely uh, used in cancer studies and coronary heart disease, but also being applied to other areas as we speak. So, you know, um, why is CART receiving more attention? Well, there is, of course, availability of huge data sets requiring analysis, but application of regression trees, you have um, a need to automate or accelerate improving analysis process. So data mining is so important now that these will really um, be a lot more available and a lot more techniques will uh, come about from this. So let's take a look at some of the random forest applications. So all sorts of, um, there's an example of uh, the heart attack being diagnosed appropriately from EKGs, chest pain, elevation of enzymes. So these things are a lot more improved in random forest applications than in uh, parametric derived, parametrically divide, derived um, algorithms. So um, in, in this, um, uh, myself and other researchers, we looked at the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Of course, this is 5,000 um, individuals are surveyed each year, and we looked at, um, at a couple of cycles between 2005 and 2010. Um, so here were the results, and I know this slide is a bit busy, but if you look closely, um, we did have significance in many of these um, factors, including, I want to bring to your attention, um, at the very bottom, the C-reactive protein um, was significant with hypertension. So um, this is something that shows that the relationship between hypertension and a lot of these factors. But what is more interesting and more important to note, it's a bit busy, but it really goes into the heart of our study um, that was completed. So um, again, just to remind you, um, the main focus of the study was finding a connection between hypertension and depression um, on a cross-sectional level, but additionally to see if there was a stronger connection between hypertension and depression in those individuals that had elevated C-reactive protein. Now, C-reactive protein is an inflammatory marker, and so uh, we wanted to see the actual effect of C-reactive protein, um, this inflammatory biomarker. So then, um, th that was done conducting logistic regression, and we did find effect modification, um, and C-reactive protein does, in fact, modify the effect of hypertension on depression. So the next thing that we wanted to see is at what level is C-reactive protein playing a role in um, in depression. So if we were to create a prediction score for depression, then um, at that level would C-reactive protein um, be elevated. So that's what we wanted to see. So in summary, what we were intending to do is look at the um, relative importance of different variables. And so by looking at that, um, we were able to determine that C-reactive protein is in fact important in the risk prediction of depression. As you can um, probably determine in the machine learning part of this, we were able to determine the relative importance. So in conclusion, we have here um, a demonstration of an example of how machine learning can be applied in the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey um, and how the relative. And this example, of course, 
this random forest model, you can see the relative importance according to the mean decrease in Gini. Um, and these are all of the predictors that were within the model for depression. And so as you can see, there's about 11 predictors. And so out of these, um, you can see CHF, congestive heart failure is at the bottom of the list, while um, age, ethnicity, smoking status, and the two variables that we're really interested in trying to find out is, of course, um, hypertension. Um, and as you can see here, hypertension is very much connected. And when we included C-reactive protein into this model, what happened was it was a bit more important than hypertension. So here, we were able to incorporate all of this. So, so this is how that works. So the next thing that we were looking at is trying to make sense of all of this and how the original regression model, which was derived from a frequentist approach, we can use that to combine what we found here in order to find out a more complete picture of what is going on. So in conclusion, artificial intelligence can indeed be harnessed in order to um, solve complex issues. Um, and what our aim here is to understand precisely some of these common factors which combine mental, physical, and social health in order to create changes in policy and changes in how um, medicine and mental health and all of these are served to the community. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to uh, contact me. I um, gave you my email information. Um, so thank you for listening. The importance um, portion of the random force can be used to understand the um, relative importance of different risk factors, which is not um, something that can be easily determined from just logistic regression alone. Um, and in other levels, we can actually um, go further and create um, certain programs based on um, the risk prediction that is that comes about through any sort of machine learning, including random forest and some more robust ensemble machine learning um, and deep learning techniques that can um, further enhance the robustness of the risk prediction. But um, overall, our model was robust. Um, there was not a high percentage of error. And so um, this was, in comparison to other machine learning models, this was the most optimal model um, for this sort of technique. So I hope um, this has really enhanced your learning of machine learning and thank you for listening.